Well, I've been coming to this show, I think, for 10 or 12 years, I don't know exactly. And it's, it's always a, a car enthusiast show, a lot of horsepower, uh, hypercars, supercars, whatever you want to call them. And what we're seeing for the first time is more of a story about autonomy, letting uh, maybe the computers take over some of the driving, including for vehicles like the one behind me. And uh, also, so vehicles uh, driving potentially uh, 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 automatically on their own, autonomous operation, mobility services, cars that might be shared. Uh, maybe that's a means to get into one of these supercars uh, without actually owning it, uh, getting it on a, on a shared basis. And mobility services, uh, using cars in different ways, and, and of course electrification. So I think, I think in many respects Geneva has always been at the forefront of electrification, uh, but certainly taking a, a, a giant step forward here, in particular with Polestar uh, and the, the launch that they had here of the Polestar 2 and, and the Google platform in the Polestar, which was kind of a game changer for infotainment systems and customer uh, user experiences in the car. What, what we're seeing here at, at Geneva and increasingly at, at other automotive shows as well is a very aggressive creative destruction going on with the car makers. So all of these uh, technologies that they're looking at, electrification, autonomy, mobility services, they're all undermining, challenging, reformatting the existing business models. Will we have dealers? What will dealers be like? Are car companies going to continue to be B2B selling cars to dealers? Or are they going to start offering transportation services directly to consumers? In other words, will cars companies become fleet operators? More and more companies like Ford and VW and GM uh, increasingly, and Renault for that matter, have the be very uh, beginnings of fleet operations, which means a whole different value proposition, possibly getting into the rental car business, possibly getting into the taxi business. Some of them are already in the taxi business. Car sharing, ride hailing. So these are the conversations we're having. It's very early days, but one should not make any mistake about the fact that this is significant creative destruction going on in the industry. We're reformatting the entire automotive industry. I think as you look across the landscape, car companies are, are being quite aggressive. Uh, you know, some are opening new factories, others are closing factories, closing divisions. Some are talking about further consolidation in the industry in order to get the kind of scale they need to take on these bigger investments uh, because billions of dollars are being uh, shot out in multiple directions. I, I wish I could say car makers are taking a rifled uh, approach, but really it's more of a shotgun because nobody knows exactly which solutions are going to be successful. When you're in the European Union for any kind of an event, you're, you're up to your eyeballs in regulators and standard setting bodies, especially here in, in Geneva. Uh, although, of course, you also have Brussels and Strasbourg and some other uh, nex uh, nexuses of that kind of activity. But it, it means that the conversation gets taken to a different level. Uh, decisions are being made, discussions are being had that could determine the very nature of how we solve these challenges, how we solve these problems. And, and the big problems that we're trying to solve are congestion, emissions, and millions of fatalities. So. I think we have the solutions on the table now to start saving lives. We just came from a discussion here about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications. Obviously 5G is on the horizon, so we're talking about a very different driving environment, but it's going to take us a few years to get there. But it, it, it's very promising and it, it should be a lot of fun.